Righto, good morning everyone. Uh, it's Travis here again. I normally do the videos out in Sorton Station in Tekapo uh, on the Loop and Grazing Trial. But today kind of got the lab coat on, uh, back in the lab doing some more looping work, this time on the rhizobia and the nodules of the plant. Uh, so yeah, sorry I look like a bit of a mad scientist at the moment, haven't had a haircut for a while. But I'll uh, forget about that and luckily the camera will be on in the cabinet, not on me. So uh, we'll get started here and I'll just sort of explain it as I go through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Uh, so this is a laminar flow cabinet. Um, so what this does is it, what I've done until now is I've just turned it off. It's been under ultraviolet light for 15 minutes and sterilised with ethanol. So that makes sure there's no bugs in the cabinet itself. Uh, which makes it 100% sterile in there. So any work you do with bacteria, you need to be working in a cabinet like this. So uh, I've got ethanol on my hands, so they're sterile, and I'm about to put my gloves on and go to work. So th this cabinet's very good because it, it keeps like an air shield, if you like, from the front here, uh, and recirculates it so the air's always clean and you don't get any contamination from other bugs uh, while you have the, have the laminar flow cabinet on. So basically, these nodules are out of a um, glass house trial that we ran, which is being presented in the uh, proceedings of New Zealand Grassland Association later on this year. And what this trial was, was testing the efficiency of some different rhizobia strains on perennial lupin. So what I've got here are some nodules from the plant and now I'm just going to sterilise them and crush them and streak them. So I thought I'd just film it to show what we do in the lab to get this kind of information. So I'll just take my forceps and sterile ones. Okay, so you see what I got there is a nodule off one of the plants. So now I'm going to open up my different petri dishes here. Now, the first one over here, that is a 100% or 96% sorry, ethanol. So that's uh, alcohol which is, sterilizes the surface of the nodule. And what alcohol does is it, well, we know it kills bacteria, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't make sure that their DNA, the DNA of the bacteria still remains, even though it's been in alcohol. So it needs to go from that for five seconds to bleach. Now the bleach actually cuts up the DNA so it's not gonna interfere with any of our data later on. And then once it's been in the alcohol and the bleach, it goes through five washes of sterile water and then I'll crush and streak it on this and take some of that fluid and put it onto a agar plate at the end. So pretty simple. Just put the nodule into the alcohol for about five seconds. So you'll notice that I have the little bit of root fragment attached to it still. And that makes it a bit easier to handle. Okay, so that's about enough time for there. Straight into the bleach. That'll just sit there for about three minutes. Um, by handling it with the root fragment means I'm not touching the nodule itself. Now you don't want to puncture the nodule or anything when you're doing any of this because then it will contaminate all your sterile water. So you want to be as careful with the nodule as you can be uh, and that, that'll prevent any contamination and false results in the future. So we can probably turn it off there and I'll come back in three minutes uh, when that one has been in the bleach long enough and we'll do the second half. All right, so that nodule has been in the bleach for about three minutes, so I'll just take it out when I catch it. Sometimes this can be hard. And put it in some sterile water. Now I tend to leave it in the first petri dish for a little bit longer than the rest. Just, just helps it to remove as much of the bleach and alcohol as possible. So I didn't explain too thoroughly what this experiment was actually looking at at the start. So basically, earlier last year, I had gone around a whole lot of different sites of the South Island and collected wild plants from different populations of lupin 
perennial lupinettas, so the ones you see on the roadside when you drive through Mackenzie Basin and Arthur's Pass and things like that, the colourful flower. And we isolated a whole lot of different rhizobia, which are the nitrogen-fixing bacteria present in most legumes. We isolated the rhizobia, identified them, um, they look, looked at their DNA makeup basically, to, looked at a few of their genes, mainly the nitrogen fixation and nodulation genes. And now what I've done is we, we use those, those strains that we isolated uh, from that initial trial and we have grown them up in a culture and re-inoculated plants in our glasshouse with them. So by doing that, what we were able to see is that any of the strains produce an increase in plant growth, which would generally be from um, improved efficiency of the symbiotic relationship between the plant and the rhizobia. So what, what the rhizobia wants is it wants some carbon or glucose to keep it moving along, so that's what keeps it alive, and in exchange it gives the plant, um, essentially fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere for the plant to use. So now what I'm doing is after that trial finished and I've taken some nodules back off the plant, I'm just checking again to see if the same rhizobia in the nodules that I initially used to inoculate the plant with. So now I'll just do the last couple of washes with water. Okay, now put the nodule on a clean petri dish lid, there we are, just get a scalpel, okay, and using the two I'm just Cut the nodule open. Okay. So what I'm doing now is just squashing the nodule. Um, so after I've cut it open, just squashing it so that I end up with this little bit of liquid here and um, that liquid will contain the rhizobia that were present in the nodule and now what I do is I take those two away now they're not sterile anymore so I'll have to use sterile ones before I do the next nodule and I get what's a sterile loop from over here and I take a yeast mannitol agar plate, so this is a good growing media for uh, rhizobia. And just touch my sterile loop on some of that nodule fluid. Okay. And just streak it up the plate like so. Okay. Now, I did a special pattern there, that's to try and isolate individual colonies of uh, rhizobia. Now, all I need to do, seal this plate. And I just label it. So that's a special code that I've got. So this nodule actually came from Arthur's Pass originally. And now what I'll do is this, this plate will go into the incubator at uh, 25 degrees for a period of between three to 10 days. You check them every day. And I'll see which colonies come up. And any ones that look like the Brady rhizobium, which is the species of rhizobia that nodulate lupin, any colonies that look like that, I will transfer them onto a fresh plate and then I can do the DNA extraction on those and just figure out 
whether or not that is the same bacteria that I introduced to the plant on purpose at the start of our inoculation efficiency trial. So that's about it. That's the whole process of testing what's in the module. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you around next time. See ya.